originario de Guatemala, pero aquí en los Estados Unidos, a Dios gracias, hemos tenido la oportunidad de obtener la ciudadanía. So my dad taught me, you know, really good uh, rules of life, you know, uh, vote, you know, for la raza, trabajando para la, pa la raza. I was born with this beautiful, amazing right to effectuate change peacefully through a ballot box. And just thinking I have the right tool to be able to even buy a house for my parents uh, later on in life. Pero me encontré con personas de mi familia vota y me ayudaron, así como me ayudaron el día de la registración también. We have been also having a lot of conversations with many people regarding the importance of getting involved in politics at the federal level and at local levels. I came to this country as an immigrant. I came to this country when I was seven days old. Really identifying yourself within a culture is very important in, in becoming part of it and doing your part in it civically. And I encourage everyone to be able to use their voice to express what it is that they believe in. It gives me such great hope. So it always leads to how can we change all the negativity into the positive. Hoy vamos a hablar de una manera contundente, una manera unida para poder crear ese futuro que todos ambicionamos para nuestras familias. ¿Verdad, padre? ¿Verdad? ¿Cómo estamos? ¿Cómo estamos votando? Eso todo va a ir en mano. Yo le digo a los niños a dissect sus neighborhoods, a dissect sus vidas, a dissect lo que está mal con sus neighborhoods, pero también lo que está bien con sus neighborhoods. Y a veces me dan una lista de like, this super long list of what is wrong, you know, it's, they love it, they, they love talking about what is wrong with the world, what is wrong with their neighborhood and stuff like that. And when I come to, well, what is right about it, and then they start speaking of, of their culture, and when they, when they start speaking of their families and their friends and their music, you know, it, it just, it gives me such great hope. And I encourage everyone to be able to use their voice to express what it is that they believe in and that they want to happen. Because we're the only ones that can make that change. En base a esto, pues, nos encontramos aquí en el campo Bailan Park y este, pues, a, a votar para nuestro futuro presidente. Esta es mi primer uh, votación aquí en los Estados Unidos después de haber conseguido mi ciudadanía. Gracias a Dios en este año, hace unos meses atrás y, y bueno, lo pensé para venir a, a votar, pensé que iba a ser un poco más, más complicado, pero me encontré con personas de mi familia vota y me ayudaron, así como me ayudaron el día de la registración también y todo se me fue fácil, se me hizo fácil y pues gracias a Dios ahora tenemos la oportunidad de, de votar, de en el país que nos adoptó. From the work that we've done and what we've seen, we, we think Latino uh, families don't, in the past, because I, I mean, this is changing, we were seeing it with our own eyes, but in the past, if they hadn't voted before, it was because they didn't really see themselves in, in the spectrum of, of the American culture. You know, you think about Americans, but, you know, a lot of the Latinos are, are you know, in the shadows. Necesitamos una voz en este país. Y mire, para mí, eh, las personas que van a salir elegidas en noviembre van a decidir sobre cosas muy importantes Exacto. en la vida de nuestra familia. Por ejemplo, vamos a tener reforma migratoria para legalizar a 11 millones de trabajadores que ahora viven con el temor de arresto y deportación. But at the end of the day, what we want to do with this work is to make sure that our community is being respected and the issues that we care being addressed. We do want to make, change the immigration reform. Part of us, and Mi Familia Vota, why we started it was because we felt that the only way that we're going to change the immigration laws is by having more people voting. For, for people that, I'm not saying who to vote for because we're not going to go there, right. but if we vote, the people that are we elected, they're going to pay attention to our, to our issues. One of the typical forms of voter suppression that has always existed has been uh, harassing at the, at the voting polls 
for example, making it difficult for people questioning them. And uh, particularly, it's happened uh, sadly uh, by some poll workers in, 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 uh, in different locations. But we're seeing more and more uh, what I call institutional forms of uh, voter suppression. And those are the proliferation of uh, voter ID laws and, and, and other laws that are being passed in different uh, states to limit uh, voters that, that are usually low income, uh, minority, or elderly. And these, these uh, pro have pro proliferated in the legislative cycles that have taken place in the last two years. Um, my dad was here on a tourist visa from Mexico. He's a, he's a doctor in Aguascalientes. And when I got here um, to, to the U.S., it was a really uh, cultural shock because from being a, in a private, private Catholic school and then going to a public school, it was a big difference. Yo, yo pienso que concretamente en Florida Central faltaba una organización que se dedicara a estimular, a motivar y a educar sobre todo a los hispanos, porque a veces los hispanos no votaban, no creo en un 100% porque no quisieran hacerlo, sino porque no tenían información de las propuestas de cada candidato, de las propuestas de cada candidato al Senado Estatal, al Senado Nacional, incluso a la Presidencia de la República. Y, a, y paralelamente a la campaña educativa era muy importante estimular, salir a la calle con un equipo que tenga un compromiso serio y un compromiso genuino de, de definitivamente de creer en el trabajo que estaba haciendo y de lograr tener un contacto eh, efectivo con esa persona que inscribíamos para que votara y con esa persona que ya cumpliendo los requisitos lo que nos falta es convencerla que ya inscrita, ya cumpliendo los requisitos necesarios, tiene que votar. Es, yo pienso que es bastante importante que nosotros nos demos a escuchar como comunidad, porque nosotros somos una, ya no somos minoría en los Estados Unidos y nosotros tenemos una, una voz muy grande que hay que aprender a usarla en esta nación. I'm one of those dreamers that actually came out to the public just a year ago. And basically, I came to the United States when I was seven months old, so as you can imagine, I've lived here all my life. My mom, she's an attorney. She's a U.S. citizen. And they met while walking across the United States to end nuclear proliferation. <laughs> so I think it would be very strange if I wasn't involved in politics to begin with. Especially with the language barrier. A lot of people make fun of me because I didn't know English. but. At the same time, I decided, I, I, I was thinking, okay, these guys don't speak Spanish, but I do. I want, I want to learn English, and I will, and I will be better than them. My father was a priest in the evangelical church, and he was sent here to, with his family to spread the gospel. And I, I almost didn't have my paperwork when I came. I was born two weeks early, and my mother and my parents didn't expect to need another mica to, to cross the frontera. My, my mother moved out here uh, when I was a young infant. I'm a first generation American. You know, she's excited to be a part of, you know, this community and, and she's probably five years now as a citizen and the best thing for her was to come out here and to vote. Well, voting is one of the biggest things. I can't vote. It's one of the privileges I would love to have. When they ask me, they're like, what, what are you going to do with your citizenship? And I'm like, vote? And it's, I... I'm one of those individuals that really push people to vote. My sorority sisters, my friends, I, my family, I push them all to vote. And if they're not registered to vote, I push them to, to get registered. This story really begins with the Russell Pierce recall a year ago. A small army of young, well-organized Latinos knocked on thousands of doors to get out the Hispanic vote against Pierce, of course, the architect of SB 1070. Pierce's defeat was historic. Experience the have. roughest experience is to get your door, the door shut in your face. Happens a lot? Yes. <laughs> but 21-year-old Rosa Valdez keeps on going. She's logged countless miles over the last four years, part of a young army in the valley that signed up tens of thousands of new Latino voters this year alone. What would you tell them as young people who have to make decisions about getting involved in politics? What would you tell them? In unions, they don't know much about unions. What would you tell them now? One thing I've learned, you know, I've been doing this longer than he's been alive. I've been doing this for 46 years. I started with Cesar Chavez, and you may have read about it in the history books. And one thing I learned from that, in this country, you don't always get what you need 
for what is fair. You get what you're strong enough to win and determined enough to hold Frederick Douglass. Nobody's in charge of our future except us. I think about all the children that were impacted by the teachers that, that taught us in my day. My name is Sylvia. I'm in Houston, Texas, and it's a privilege to be doing this right now because I want to convey a message to many people, to the young people of today. When I grew up, we were not allowed to speak Spanish. We had to speak English. So I had to learn Spanish all over again when I was 11. And then when I went into junior high school, I had some really traumatic experiences. I witnessed things that, you know, affected my life and took me down a pathway of, of improvement in my life because I didn't want to go through that. I didn't want my children to go through that. I didn't want my grandchildren to go through that. Part of our goal is to uh, reach out to Latino communities. Uh, there's about 140,000 uh, Latinos uh, living in here in Inland Empire that are eligible to vote, but uh, for some reasons uh, they're not registered to vote. And, and one of the ideas is to show awareness and at the same time uh, the Latino vote is what's going to make a difference in this, in this electoral election. Now that the Latino vote is so important and it's all over the radio, it's all over the news, I mean, every candidate is courting the Latino community. You know, organizations like Mi Familia Vota, we are working, you know, to educate our community, our people, um, and saying, you know, we have a right in, in deciding what we want for our kids, for our future, for myself. Um, you know, we, we need to because we are a part of this country. I do what I do because I grew up as an immigrant. We grew up uh, not knowing what our rights were. And I do this because that shouldn't happen. In, in this country, that gave me, my family, the opportunity that we have. That shouldn't happen. And with Mi Familia Bota, we, you know, we do good work. We give, we give our community a voice because we deserve respect. And take family members and friends to go out there and vote. At the end of the day, I'm like, you're not just voting for yourself, you're voting for a whole country. You can make the difference in this country. And how you can love your country so much that you can't leave it. That there's something left there to make better. And it's your heart, it's your soul. You, you can't leave that behind. But I want to tell the young people of today that so many people suffered and went through so much all over this nation for you to have a future, for you to be able to vote, for you to be able to go to college and, and to do something with your life. Don't waste your time. Be diligent about your education. Be diligent about your future. You have a future. We're a strong, proud, and a hardworking people. And our, our, the work isn't done. And the work that we do with Mi Familia Bota is, it's the righteous work. We're, we're doing God's work. And I'll be damned if the whole entire universe collided for my two parents to meet while walking across the country to nuclear proliferation. If I don't try and give somebody that right to peacefully affect change in the country they live in. So that's why I do what I do every single day. We're all here for something bigger. And I think that it's, it's great work. And when I found Mi Familia Bota, it really gave me a purpose, a renewed purpose, because our community, our, nuestra gente, we, we deserve better. But the only way we can get that is if we stand up and we demand it. And we demand it at the ballot box. We demand it by becoming citizens. We demand it by empowering our children, by empowering each other, and empowering our communities to stand up and, and expect and demand more. I am Mi Familia Bota. 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 I am Mi Familia Bota.